Your insurance company will not be fair with you. Call Sweet James at 800-500-5200. He will protect you. Put the number on your cell, 800-500-5200. 800-500-5200 or sweetjames.com. What do you mean I can't write off my lunches by the pool at Morongo? It's called market research. And now, the top five reasons to think of the So, Russian troops could even be under orders. 
But, for example, the town of Bucha, it wasn't every single member of uh, that community lined up and shot. There were a few hundred. There weren't everybody. And when we talk about genocide, it is wholesale. This is not wholesale. And it's very important for us to know the difference. And the entire history of genocide uh, and war crimes, all done by treaty, uh, as a matter of fact, and I think I want to get into that next day or two, the modern day uh, rules of warfare, as we know them, actually were established by Abraham Lincoln during the Civil War, where he put it into writing and passed the law. And I'll go over that in probably by tomorrow, because that's fascinating history. But today, we're dealing with Zelensky. Today, we're dealing with the charges of genocide. And so, uh, genocide is probably the most well-known is uh, during the Nuremberg trials where these Germans were charged with genocide and war against uh, humanity. And it was. When you think about a state-sponsored or a state-created, committed crime of genocide, that's what happened. That's what Germany did with the Jews, with the Gypsies, uh, taking, literally killing as many or all of them, and in the case of Germany, on an industrial scale. The Germans are known for their position in their industry, have been forever. They took that kind of organization, they took that skill level that Germans have and did to this day, and uh, and put it to use to kill entire populations. That's genocide. That's not what ha what's happening here. And then the rules of genocide and war crimes, I've always found fascinating. In law school, I did, I must have done a hundred page paper on this, spent a lot of time. Uh, one of the most famous trials uh, was 1963 in Israel, where Adolf Eichmann was, uh, was tried for crimes against humanity and genocide, where he helped uh, the killing of hundreds of thousands of Jews that he was responsible for. And there was a couple of very interesting legal arguments that he made. One, you can't charge me Israel because Israel didn't exist when I committed, when I allegedly committed these crimes. So how can you charge me when you're not even a country? There was no jurisdiction. Number two, you kidnapped me. Here I am in Argentina living my quiet life, and you come in with a bunch of Mossad agents, and you kidnap me and bring me to Israel illegal. That's a different legal argument. It's kind of interesting. And I was under order. Okay? If I didn't do it, I would have been killed. And here is what the court said. This is the part that we've been genocide war against humanity and the whole different matter. Number one, the court said it doesn't matter. When you talk about these kinds of crimes, uh, we don't even care about jurisdiction. Any country, any group of people, any place, anywhere can bring these charges. In any country. Because these crimes are not against a specific jurisdiction. They're not against a specific people. They are against humanity. And humanity goes beyond jurisdiction of countries. This is the entire world that, in fact, you committed a crime. So jurisdiction goes right out the window. Everybody has jurisdiction. As far as we kidnapped you and brought you here, sure we did. It doesn't matter. We don't care. Because when you're dealing with this kind of crime, all of that goes out the window. Uh, that was uh, decided by the Israeli Supreme Court during the Eichmann trial when it was argued that you can't kidnap me and bring me here. And you know where they got that, by the way? Also from the Civil War uh, during the time of Abraham Lincoln, where it was an American law that said, and to this day, we don't care how you got here. Once you're here, we're going to try you. But but I was kidnapped. Hey, that's not our problem. We don't care. And then the issue becomes uh, what I was following orders. So let's say you have, and then I'm going to talk later on about Putin being charged. Let's say you have Russian soldiers that are going to be charged individually. And they're witnesses, and there's evidence, and uh, there are other soldiers that will point the finger. And so here you have a Russian soldier or two or a commander who is going to defend himself and say, yes, I was complicit in this, yes, I either watched this happen, or yes, I took part of it, and I was under orders. And I would have been killed. That was uh, what the Nazis had said during World War II, during the Nuremberg trial. I would have been shot. And the concept when you're dealing with a war against, with war against uh, humanity, crime against humanity, genocide, etc., the concept is too bad. Again, this crime goes to the level that you can't even say, my life was in danger if I didn't commit that crime, if I didn't do what I was ordered to do. And the concept is, okay, 
You just were at the wrong place, wrong time, brother. You cannot do this. So, when we talk about a head of state uh, being tried as a war criminal, can it happen? It can. Will it happen? It's happened before, but it won't, it certainly won't in the case of Putin. It's just not going to happen. And over the next few days, uh, I, I, I don't have time to really get involved uh, with this now because it's a little wonky and it's kind of, uh, it, it's a lot to understand, but it's really important. It can be broken down that there, as I said earlier, there are several different courts of which Putin and Russians can be brought before. Some which only deal with countries, for example, the International Court of Justice at The Hague, this is not for individuals who have committed the crime. This is just, uh, it, it's created to resolve interstate disputes, not to rule on individual cases. That's the International Court of Justice. The International Criminal Court can go after individuals and does. And it actually has teeth and put people in jail. The European Court of Human Rights handles cases against both individuals and groups and countries, but they're only there by treaty and certain countries aren't part of it. By the way, the United States isn't part of any of this, just to let you know. Uh, and the reason is because uh, these courts are comprised of many, many third world countries that view the United States as a country that commits war crimes anyway. And the U.S. said, no, thank you, I'm out of it. And so there are a lot of politics. I mean a lot. While we're waiting for Zelensky to, Zelensky to speak in front of the United Nations, which we're going to carry live in a few moments, uh, if uh, we have time before Zelensky starts, we to talk about uh, some uh, gun laws. California is the toughest U.S. gun laws. And look what happened up in Sacramento with the killing of six people, another mass shooting. And what is going on? Does it have any peace? Our laws, uh, it's a mess as always. Let's check in with Jennifer Jones, Lee, live from the KFI 24-hour newsroom. The Ukrainian military says Russian forces are preparing for an offensive in the southeast part of Ukraine. Russian soldiers are also moving into eastern Ukraine to a Russian-controlled area known as the Donbass. The move follows the Russian withdrawal from towns around the capital and the discovery of hundreds of bodies. The civilian deaths have led to accusations of war crimes and demands for tougher sanctions on Moscow as handled mentioned. We are waiting for Ukrainian President Zelensky to address the UN Security Council this morning. As soon as he does, we'll bring it to you live. NATO chief Jens Stoltenberg says Russia is regrouping its troops away from Kyiv only to amass them in eastern and southern Ukraine in the coming weeks. To try to take the entire Donbass and to create a land bridge to occupy Crimea. Stoltenberg says Moscow is not giving up its ambitions in Ukraine. News is brought to you by American Vision Windows. Brea is facing a lawsuit if it refuses to switch to district voting. A conflicting lawsuit demands the city stick with its 100-year-old voting system. Brea Steve Barrick says the state's Voting Rights Act is being forced on Brea, even though minorities are not being disenfranchised in the city. There are cities, school boards, water districts that are all going to be sisters so they don't get sued. Our hope is that the California Supreme Court is going to put some definition on this law. Derek says minority populations in both cities are too small to create majority minority voting districts. The Brea City Council will discuss options tonight. Tesla CEO Elon Musk is joining the board of directors at Twitter now that he's bought a large stake in the social media company. ABC's Andrew Dimbert says Musk has been critical of the site's over free speech, but now he owns part of it. Musk bought 73.5 million shares of Twitter, acquiring more than a 9% stake in a social media site. Musk did not disclose what he paid, but the investment would have cost around $3 billion based on last Friday's value. Musk tweeted last night, do you want an edit button followed by two options, Y-S-E or O-N? More than 70% of the responses were apparently yes, or in this case, Y-S-E. And the chairman of the House Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol says he believes President Trump's daughter Ivanka will appear before the committee. Congressman Benny Thompson says he's looking forward to hearing from her. I have no reason to believe that she's not because we have been told. Thompson says former VC Pence may never appear before the committee because many of the top aides have already shared significant information. We'll get a look at your drive on the 10 again after sports with Wayne. So last 
Number one seed in the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament are now the champions. Kansas State's an amazing comeback with a double-digit deficit to beat North Carolina 72-69. to Here's Kansas, Kansas coach Bill Self. I don't know that I've ever had a team flip the script like we have probably in the NCAA Tournament. I thought this would be good, and this is a heck of a lot better than I thought it would be. I'm Wayne Resnick, KFI Sports. If uh, your business has five or more employees and you manage uh, to uh, survive COVID, you're eligible to receive a payroll tax rebate of $26,000 per employee. And it's not alone. This is a refund of your taxes. The challenge is getting your hands on this. Uh, it's a complicated federal uh, program. So how do you cut through this red tape and get your refund money? Well, I, I suggest going to GetRefunds.com. These are specialists in this little-known payroll tax refund program, and they do all the work. Uh, no charge up front. As a matter of fact, the only charge is a share of the percentage of the cash they get for you. Uh, it's a contingency arrangement. And businesses of all types can qualify, uh, even those who get PPP money, nonprofits, even if you have increases in sales. In another program, they got my business a six-figure refund. The average client in this program gets a quarter of a million dollars back. Go to GetRefunds.com, click on the Qualify New button, answer a few questions. They do the rest. GetRefunds.com. Here says how weather from KFI. We've got a heat advisory in effect starting tomorrow at 11, lasting till 6 on Friday night. Mostly sunny today with highs in the upper 60s to low 70s at the beaches. We'll be in the upper 70s to mid 80s for Metro LA and OC. Mid to upper 80s for the IE and the valleys. And then even warmer starting tomorrow and by Thursday and Friday. Highs everywhere should be in the 80s, 90s, and in the valleys and IE, low 100s. Then cooler for the weekend. From the Southern California Toyota Dealers Traffic Center, let's go places. Jeff Ball, let's get a review of the 10. <laughs> Well, uh, well, it's not good. And when, let me add, that's the general weather report. They're in spots anyway. Now, listen up. These, all of these could make you really late. Going through Montclair, westbound. Westbound, Santa Monte Vista, right outside the mall. Three left lanes in the block forever, it seems. This morning, complicated crash. Westbound 10 stops at Euclid. All the surface streets kind of busy around there. And then going the other direction. Cobb is on uh, Palm Springs. Run. If you're going out there, it's a pardon. I hope you're not on the 10. But... East on 10 at, at Maine, the three right lanes are blocked there. It's been, blocked, it's been, been that way for a long time this morning. Uh, it's really jammed south. It's about five or six miles. It's a parking lot there. Uh, make the call. This is definitely going to make you late. And San Fernando Valley now. South 405 at Burbank Boulevard. Carpool lanes have been blocked all morning long. It seems if you're coming down from the 118, it really stops a little bit south of Roscoe Boulevard. If you want to get off and use the pole, but i got to warn you, it's really super busy getting through the light at Burbank, and then again from Magnolia, all the way down under the 101 uphill to the tunnel. It's real slow going. Tough, tough morning. KFI in the sky helps get you there faster. I'm Jeff Paul. We are waiting now for President Zelensky to speak of Ukraine, to speak before the UN Security Council. Handle one thing um, that we were talking about earlier when we were trying to see whether or not he was going to speak right at 7 o'clock is we talked about the five um, permanent members of the UN Security Council, Russia being one of them, having veto power. Another one that has veto power that's a permanent member is China. And I think that I'll be interested to see what China's reaction is to this today because it would be the first time that China's had to say something independent of a meeting with Russia or a meeting with the U.S. This would be based solely on its reaction to what Ukrainian President Zelensky said. Uh, if I had to guess, I mean China's going to get the same. Uh, China's officially declared its neutrality, does not want to get involved. Uh, China's in a very interesting position. One being uh, that China's uh, main enemy, as far as China sees itself, is the United States. Um, certainly not Russia. And so therefore, uh, an enemy, my enemy is my friend, and there was talk about China being involved in helping Russia. Uh, there had been reports that, that Russia had asked China for help, although both China and Russia denied it, both in terms of money and in terms of military aid, uh, because uh, Russia is not doing so well. Supply lines are in miserable shape, the train and the troops are uh, certainly uh, not up to par, the equipment that was used, the subpar, so uh, but Russia needs some help. It really does with experience to do this. And if they're going to prevail eventually, I think so. But uh, that's my call. So far, everybody who said that has been wrong. Will there be some kind of a peace agreement? Of course there will. And the large parts of Ukraine are not going to be there anymore. But back to China. <clears throat> so uh, China 
also is one of his prime, prime tenets is the recognition of the sovereignty of nations. China has recognized Ukraine. Ukraine is recognized throughout the world as an independent sovereign country. The only country that says Ukraine is not part of, or is not an internationally uh, recognized country is Russia. And Belarus, because Belarus is a puppet of Russia. And the concept from Russia is, what are you doing? Ukraine is not Ukraine. Ukraine is the Ukraine, as we used to call it, a part of Russia. Matter of fact, the uh, nuclear weapons that were held by Russia were in Ukraine because it was part of Russia. And therefore, uh, there's no issue as far as Putin is concerned. So he is not invading another country. He's just taking that land that's his. That for some reason, one another, the rest of the world, crazy in that it is, has decided that there's an independent country. Here. So China believes that sovereignty is critical. How do they go back on that without being completely difficult? How do they say we believe in sovereignty, that's one of our basic uh, concepts, basic tenets of the way we view international diplomacy, except when it comes to Ukraine, which we already recognize as an international, uh, as an internationally uh, recognized sovereign country. Here's what I think they're going to do. Is, couldn't they say that after speaking with President Putin, we now understand that he's taking back what he considers rightfully his, therefore they never were sovereign no. in the first place? No. And, I mean, I, I'm just saying that could be their argument. As if, if, I mean, you know, one out of a hundred chance that that's the case. Getting back to what we said, um, when it comes to the peace agreement, the peace talks, I saw um, a quote from President Zelensky this morning. He was talking about what happened in Dutra specifically, because that's where, you know, you were discussing the difference in the words, uh, what's a war crime, what's a genocide, that sort of thing. And he's saying now, he feels it will be difficult to negotiate with, with Russia, which is what I thought was interesting that he, uh, earlier, up until today, had said he always wanted to sit down with Russia. He wanted to sit down with President Putin and come to some sort of a agreement. This is the first time that I have heard him say, mm, I'm not sure anymore. Not sure that that's what I want. Again, yeah, you, when you think about it, I, I, I can see this. I mean, how do you sit down and talk to a leader that is simply killing your citizens, murdering them? Torturing them, yeah, yeah. Them that's, them that's a very back. see. This is not warfare. This is not legitimate warfare. Keep in mind, Russia has signed on to international conventions. It's a member of the Geneva Convention, which limits you can't go after civilians. You can't. You cannot do this. And they've agreed to it. Not that anybody ever pays attention to the Geneva Convention. So. And so uh, it has uh, boosted. And you're going to find uh, what we're hearing is boosting just the tip of the ice where you're going to see uh, ha this happening all over the country where Russian troops uh, have in fact had to retreat uh, because Ukraine has been successfully taking back territory and you're going to see uh, this evidence of this uh, utter uh, depravity of uh, children being killed and tortured. I mean, you know, you should have taken it. How is that possible? Well, no. uh, the depravity of man never surprises me. This uh, surprised me just a little bit. CNN's reporting that Ivanka Trump will meet today with the January 6th committee. Oh, that's not surprising. Yeah, she is, uh, and it came to, uh, to uh, actually, Ivanka Trump was on the side of uh, uh, making sure, trying to make sure that her dad uh, did put a stop to it. He was one of those, her dad, you got to stop this, you got to depart it, there has to be something here. And there's a lot of evidence to that effect. Now, she's going to be touched by against the body of the That's what I was going to say. Everybody and their uncle who is associated with Trump, when it comes to this, uh, I would say what? Over 50% have ignored the subpoena completely, and those who have complied have not said to do anything that makes a difference one way or the other. If you're going to be upset, I mean, look at the cases here. We need to get this off here. Donald Trump or Congress. And Congress has absolutely no power here. It's an issue of consent citations. And theoretically put someone in prison, I don't think anything has ever gone. It's a slap on the wrist, you get a, uh, you get a citation, and then you say no, and you get a contempt citation, and you take it up to the courts, and you appeal it, and so it, it has absolutely uh, no power whatsoever. On the other hand, getting Donald Trump uh, pissed off at you, uh, let's just say there's power. <laughs> there is power. Uh, I see that the uh, United Nations is very interesting enough, the Russians are still there. That's where I think we're going now. Yeah, we're going. Let's do it. Yeah,
Dear Mr. Secretary General, this is the members of the Security Council and other members of the community. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm sure that all the representatives of the United Nations member states will hear me today. Yesterday I returned from our city of Bucha, recently liberated from Russian troops in North uh, Frontier. So there is not a single time that they would not commit the best military skills for and purposefully killed anyone who served well, our country. This is killed, shot and killed women outside their houses when they take right. advice to call someone who is alive. They killed entire families, adults and children, and they tried to burn the bodies. I am addressing you on behalf of the people who honor the memory of the deceased every single day and the memory of the civilians who died, who were shot and killed in the back of their head after being tortured. Some of them were shot on the street, others were thrown into the well. So they now there in suffering. They were killed in their apartment houses, blown up. Why can't I be honest? Civilians were crushed by tanks while sitting in the, their cars in the middle of the road just for their pleasure. They cut off a uh, uh, lip, cut their throat, I slashed know. their throat. Oh, Women were sorry. raped and killed in front of their children. They were, uh, their tongues were oh, pulled out only because the person did not hear what they wanted to hear from them. So this is no different from other ter terrorists such as Daesh who occupy some territories. And here it is done by a, a member of the United Nations Security Council destroying internal uh, unity borders, countries, oh, and uh, taking uh, the right of more than a dozen of uh, countries who are uh, self-determined and independent. They pursue consistent policy of destroying ethnic and religious diversity. They inflict wars and deliberately lead them in uh, such a way that to kill as many uh, regular uh, civilians and civilians to leave the country where they deploy their troops in rule and they you support hatred at the level of the state and seek to export it to other countries through their system of propaganda and political corruption. They show a global food crisis that could lead to famine in Africa, For in the uh, shores, uh, and in other countries, and in, and in market political chaos in many countries, were to, and uh, destroying their domestic security. So where is the security that the Security Council needs to guarantee? It's not there, although there is a Security Council. Oh. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, so uh, where...